Hello, welcome to 30 Minutes. I'm Rick Anthony. Ever wonder where the ideas for movies come from? What are the creative forces that have produced, uh, I think the number is 2,577 films around the world, about 600 of them Hollywood features? Today's episode of 30 Minutes here at Radnor Studio 21 is about an independent film conceived by a young man named Mitchell Bass, funded by his parents, Marcia and Steve Bass, directed by a Delaware County producer-director with strong ties to Hollywood, and starring another Del Delaware County resident. So it's a local production, but on a much larger stage. It all started because Mitchell had an idea, a concept for a film about good and evil. Mitchell's neighbor happens to be Joshua Coates, the producer-director, uh, who encouraged Mitchell to put his ideas down on paper. And that was the beginning of a journey that has produced a 90-minute uh, part sci-fi, part mystery thriller titled Hollywood. During the first half of today's show, we're going to be visiting with Mitchell and Marsha Bass, and then we'll talk to uh, the producer-director, Joshua Coates, and the star, uh, whose name is Pete Postiglione. I think I got it right. And as soon as I heard it, I, thought, I said to somebody, he belonged in The Godfather. <laughs> Mitchell, it's pleasure amazing. to have you here. Marcia, I can't reach. Uh, nice okay. to be here. I, I guess this whole thing started because uh, Marcia talked to a friend of mine who has been on the show on 30 Minutes, and it was suggested that I contact you to get the story that, that all happened last week or this right. week. Right? Absolutely. And here we are. But I'm delighted we were able to put it together in such order because you have a showing of the film, which we'll get into in a great deal more detail, uh, just coming up in mid-October, is that right? That's correct. Uh, can I mention Please? October yep. 16th at 7 p.m. at the Bryn Mawr Film Festival in yeah. Bryn Mawr on Lancaster Avenue. Institute. You're correcting your mother? Yes. Oh. It's not the festival, it's the Institute, isn't it? What a, what a, okay. Lancaster Something. Avenue in Bryn Mawr. Right. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> So how does it feel to have an idea that you conjured up in your ima imagination now on the big screen, or about to be? Uh, it feels great. Um, I've been trying to do something like this since I was in middle school, right around here actually, right mm -hmm. in middle school. I've been working hard, coming up with ideas, and really, with all my ideas that I would come up with, there really had nothing that I could do with them. I have a lot of ideas like that. <laughs> exactly. And I, I, I became uh, like 47 years old, still nothing. And then I got fortunate because Joshua Coase, the director, moved somewhere close by to me, mm -hmm. really close by, and we met. And he said, he's a director. And I said, I'm a writer. And he said, what do you have? I said, I have ideas. I don't really write them. I just have them. And she, he said, write something down. Maybe I could do something with it. And then about a year goes by, and he says, what do you have? I said, nothing. I don't, I don't write. <laughs> I said, so this is your big opportunity. I can really help you here. This is what you've been working for. So eventually, this went on for like two years. And he said, OK, what's your best idea? And I told him Hollywood was the idea I had. The title of the film. The title of the film. And then we kind of just, then he told me to write it. He said, that's great. You should write it. And I wrote nothing. And about six months later, he just said, you know what? I'll write the script. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. It's spelled H O L O Y W O U L D. O U L D. So uh, it's a story about. What's the story like? The story is about uh, there's a guy named Mark Travis, and he is a famous, rich writer, and he's won awards, and he eventually runs out of ideas, and he gets writer's block, but his agent is pushing him, and his agent says. I can help you, but you gotta. It turns out what the help that arrives to him is very negative, in a way. And I mm -hmm. won't go much further than that. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, and he went. He went to his hometown to find inspiration. That was the idea of it. All right. So he goes to his hometown to find inspiration, and he eventually finds something that he wasn't expecting to find, which is Holly. And what Holly would do is like nothing he'd ever. Expected. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the idea. This is not a film for children, apparently. It is not a film. No, for <laughs> it, is it rated? I don't or know. Will it be? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Is, did you intend it to be uh, to have a moral, uh, to, to truly be a, a good and evil? It. It. You know, 
when I came up with the idea originally, yes. it was based on a book that I wrote when I was 16. I wrote like this long book, 300 pages, nothing became of it, but the essence of the idea was in there, which, I mean, the idea was a guy, and he wants to become a writer, and he runs out of ideas, and so that was, I mean, that was in the novel but I wrote. That sounds like you. It's exactly like <laughs> me. It's almost based on a true story. It's autobiography. Yeah. Um, and I have done some very nefarious things to come up with ideas. Uh -huh. I really have. And that's kind of where this idea comes from. All right. The search for inspiration at the cost of what? That's the question. What's the cost? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so Travis comes home and is seduced by circumstance, by an individual, into a life that was new and somewhat disturbing to him. Um, pretty much. Um, he was seduced by... More, by, by getting more than he already has. Yeah. He was perfectly well off. It's greed. What's that? Greed. Greed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, old-fashioned greed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the greed manifests itself in a girl named Holly. Yeah. Is what it comes down to. It's a familiar story. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Marcia, what was your reaction when Mitchell said, Mom, uh, I would like to do this film, but I need some money? Uh, your reaction and Steve's. Well, it was more Steve's reaction, which was kind of negative. Um, <laughs> kind of negative? <laughs> it was pretty negative. He didn't know who Josh was. Yeah, he had never even Josh, met Josh. Josh came to me and said, we could do this if you can find yeah. some money. And I said, Mom, Dad, give me some money for a movie. Yeah. Yeah. And he yeah. said, who's Josh? And no. <laughs> <laughs> so we met Josh. We actually met him at a diner. And he told us what he had done, his ideas, yeah. the fact that he really wanted to do this movie with Mitchell but he needed the, the money, and originally my husband said, no, we're not gonna do it, and then we talked and talked, and I kind of pushed it a little bit, and he finally said, okay, this will be Mitchell's chance mm -hmm. to prove what he can do, and we financed it, and... Has he recovered? <laughs> my dad? No, Why do you think he's not here? <laughs> no, he's fine. I mean, it really, the movie turned out better than we ever yeah. thought it would be, um, and... I, it opened um, at the Ridgewood Film Festival, where it got it was sold out. It got That's wonderful great. reviews, and it it's just so exciting for us. It really is. It's amazing. It's it's something we, something that I was hoping for, but didn't ever expect to be yeah. able to achieve. I, I'm sure it's been the highlight yeah. of your life. Oh my yeah. gosh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, not many parents have the bragging rights to say my my son did a movie right. and my husband and I co-produced it, or right. funded it. Uh, has that new status changed your life? in any way? Um, are you and your husband still talking? No, we are, and actually he's retired. I work full-time at Ludington Library in mm -hmm. Bryn Mawr, and so that's kept me kind of grounded, I think, the fact that I go to work every day. But yeah. it's it's it, it's just been so exciting for us, and yeah, um, we are... A little experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I mean, even being at the filming, we were there for sure. the whole filming and seeing how that happens. Uh, now, this is an independent film, right. and I've had some experience with those in the past, but in my experience, which goes back about 100 years, uh, I was involved in a lot of corporate video filming right. and so on, and it is such a tedious, monotonous, mind-numbing experience, uh, waiting around and the, tr trying to get a shot, and the shot doesn't work, et cetera, et cetera. Did you go through all of that? Were you on the set? When okay, let me just say that I have been you know, in some other little things involved um, where you're doing a commercial for something and you sit and they, you spend yes. an hour and a half yes. getting one shot. Yes. This actually didn't work like that. Really? I was so, and I think everybody in the cast would say that. It went so smoothly. There were not many takes that were done well, over. And we, we had the budget for 11 days. Yeah, we, we <laughs> so had a we very had limited budget. <laughs> so it had to be, you know. Uh -huh. But everybody cooperated. Everything just went so smoothly. We were very lucky. And most of the shooting, or all the shooting, was done in this area? The shooting was done around this area. Some of it in the main line, some of it in Delco, uh, Newtown Square, uh, the Primos, Clifton Heights area. And it was almost like a family because yeah. there were people we knew, areas that we well, knew. I, we did part of it in the the pizzeria down the street from me that I've been to a thousand times and part of it in the bar that I've been to. <laughs> so it was kind of exciting like that. I got to walk in as a... <laughs> did, did you uh, use locals as extras? Absolutely. Uh, That's, uh, it was very low budget. Yeah. <laughs> just well, it's nice for that, just involving people in the community. Well, well, did you get somebody from California? Yeah. The, the star, the Holly character is from oh, California. Uh -huh. But um, it, it was just, 
Yeah, I mean, everybody just was so proud of the whole thing, and they all yeah. came. They all came from this area to yeah. Ridgewood for the premiere when we had that, and it just. And Josh, I have to can't say enough about him. He just made the whole thing work. Mm -hmm. Well, that's his job. Yeah. Well, I but, uh, so he gets paid for it. <laughs> Were there many script changes? Now, you didn't write the script. Josh wrote right. the I script. Right. I wrote but, but the poem in it, yeah. which kind of guided the script. Okay, so, so that hear. inspired it and provided the framework right. for exactly. the script. Right, exactly. Were there many script changes, or did did you experience with so many independent films, too? You have a script, right. but you permit the actors uh, to improvise once they get into character. I think Josh will Josh, probably be able to yeah. answer that. But I will say that what's interesting is that I don't think there was a lot of room for impro improvisation, maybe, or a lot of time yeah. for that. Maybe there was. But once we had the whole thing made, and we had the whole, and we, we watched it, we realized that part of it should be in different places. So we started rearranging the, the, uh, the parts of the movie. Right. So that's what took a lot of time, actually. So like the beginning was the middle, and the middle became the so end. So you say reshooting or re Not reshooting, no, 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 just in the editing editing. 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 Because uh, fortunately, I live. So the assembling all of the Yeah, things. exactly. Yeah. And I live close enough to Josh and he's got all the equipment in, in his place, where we, I'd go over there, and together we would try to figure out how this would work best. Right. And we just rearranged it until it looked as good as it could. Uh, who had final say on the finished product? When it was in the can, who said, that's it, this is our film? She did, producer. No, oh, the money. The no, money. no, the money. no, Absolutely. no, really Josh did. I mean, if there was an idea that we didn't agree on, we would talk it over and come to, you yeah. know, yeah, we all actually yeah. we all worked together. My mom was in, yeah. in that process of rearranging. I the mean, there was so. never a time yeah. when there was, I mean, any conflict. I hate yeah. to say yeah, that it sounds, not, you know. Not. I mean, we had different different ideas sometimes, but it was never a confrontational situation. It was always open. We were open to each other's ideas, yeah. which makes an incredible working environment. It doesn't sound like much fun. There's got to be conflict. I'm <laughs> sorry. Are we dis we're disappointing you. This <laughs> sorry. This will be much more interesting. <laughs> we're sorry. Uh, do you have aspirations of becoming the next M Night Shyamalan? Um, have you met him? I have not. I would love to meet him. I know he's in this area. Uh, and he does do kind of stuff that I do in terms of ideas and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know where I want to go from here. I'd like to continue with the writing and the producing and maybe the acting at some point. I'd be interested in that. But uh, I am, is that night? I guess he's around here somewhere. Well, maybe he's right in Newtown Square. Maybe, uh, maybe he'll yeah. hear this. And come, yeah. and, uh, oh, you know, right. fight you over. I, that would be very nice. If he sees a movie, come out. Yeah. Come out, come out, Michelle. Yeah, but at this point, don't you, be don't, you don't have a sequel or another. We do have it. We have, have we have a sequel. potential Hollywood too, actually. Oh, Potentially, really? we're working on ideas for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the same storyline, the same characters. Same or? character. Well, it, it, we ha that's we're not sure exactly, but we have some definite ideas. I mean, it would be Holly. Holly would be in it for sure. Right. And hopefully, Mark, Travis, Pete, the yeah. main characters. Absolutely. I know there's a word for that. It's, it's it's not continuity, but where you take the same characters or many of the same well, the, or the principal characters right. and take him or her through another journey. Well, right. it would be either that or we're thinking about making a TV series uh -huh. in which every week uh, Holly would mess with a different kind of person. Kind ah, of thing. okay. And you'll you'll understand that more once you see the movie. Yeah. But um, it'd be interesting. Okay. Um, the devil and somebody else's children. Do you expect the film to make a profit? I, I certainly. Steven does. Steven does. Your husband Steven does. does. Yeah. Um, you know what? Even if it doesn't, I have to say, yeah. this was really it's, it's the highlight. Once in a once lifetime. In a lifetime we would never sure. have done something yeah, like I, this. And it's, you know, but we're hoping. Yeah. Um, and you can talk to Josh about that yeah, more. I, I think for me, what would be nice is if this movie was something I could bring to other people and say, look, look what I've done. Maybe I could work with you kind of yeah. thing. As a, as a jumping point. Who do you envision as the audience, the primary audience for your film? Because if there are lessons to be learned from what they see in, in this story, who did you have in mind when you conceived of the idea and maybe said to yourself, if, if they see this, it might be helpful in some way? I would or, say, or is that a yeah. reach? No, no, it's not a reach at all. Um, I would say that this movie could help people, not help people, but can make people think in different ways, people who feel like they need to have more in life when yeah. they really should be content with what they have. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not very obvious from the film, but even the title, Hollywood, yeah. you think of Hollywood, the real Hollywood, yes. and it's all about people who will do anything to get yeah. ahead. And that's kind of what the story's about. This guy who's okay. trying to get ahead, mm -hmm. and he does something that he probably shouldn't be doing. 
I know we can't talk about the surprise ending, so I won't ask. <laughs> right. Mitchell, I wish you the oh, very best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Marcia. It was thank delightful. You for thank you so much. Paul and, and arranging all of this. We'll now switch to Joshua Coates, the uh, uh, producer, director, and writer. Right. And the star of the film, who plays Travis, is that right? Mark Travis. Travis. Yeah. Right. And that's Pete Postilion. Close, uh, close Pete? Close, close. okay. Postilion. <laughs> 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 thank you. <laughs> that's it. We're back uh, with this episode of 30 Minutes, featuring a brand new film called Hollywood. In the first segment, we had uh, the young man who created the idea, came up with the idea, and looked to, looked to other people to help materialize it, bring it to life. And we had with us his mother, who is uh, one of a two-part set, that is Mr. and Mrs. Bass, who, uh, when Mitchell went to his parents and said, I have this great idea, but I need a few bucks, they were kind enough to come up with the money to fund the film. Uh, they did it, however, because they believed in the people who were associated with the film, and one of them, the principal, is Joshua Rick, Coates. Rick Thank Anthony. Thank you very much to be here. Pleasure. Uh, producer, writer, director. Janitor. Janitor. <laughs> but whatever Absolutely. And the star of the film, Pete Ostiglione. Beautiful. I got it? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Yes. I still think you belong in the garden. My five. mom would be proud. <laughs> if you're watching. So would mine. <laughs> that I got it out right. Yeah. But my wife is Italian, but uh, I am not. I would thought, therefore, I'm not gifted with the language. But I appreciate it. You say it with your hands, it's uh, like. Yeah. <laughs> say, say anything with your hands. Yeah. <laughs> so, Joshua, I, yes. I heard one version of the story. Yes. That is a, a neighbor. A young man yes. uh, that you observed mm -hmm. which uh, had bright, had interesting ideas mm. and so on, and you encouraged him to put it down on paper. Yeah. But he was having difficulty doing that. Yes. And so you took his idea and you put it down on paper. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Before we get to what happened then, yeah, yeah. Uh, give me your background. How did you break into this oh, business? Because it's so man, tough. Man, how long we got? And, and, <laughs> uh, 12 minutes. And, and how have you managed to make a living? Well, it, it's easy. Um, Basically, my father was in entertainment. He was a he was a part of a, a musical uh, group out of Philadelphia, right. Brendan and Tabulations. They were they had a couple hits, uh, so I always had a knack for that environment. Uh, when I was five, he snuck me into the movie RoboCop, which yeah. a lot of people would look down on, like, "Hey, why are you sneaking your young kid?" But mm -hmm. it's something I wanted to see. When I when we walked past, I seen the billboard of. RoboCop standing out of his car, and I said, wow, I want to see that. Triggered my imagination. So we go see it the first time, and then for 13 weeks after that, every Saturday we went to go see it, <laughs> until it left the theater. So I always, so I, when I would see the movie, I would say, oh my God, I want to be a part of that. I didn't know exactly what it was. I didn't know if I wanted to be an actor. As time went on, um, my parents enrolled me into uh, Kappa, which is a high school of creative performing arts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just see what, you know, what's there. And I took up filmmaking, I took up uh, method acting, I took up all these things, but I, I, I leaned toward filmmaking. I, I got a, a joy out of that. I mean, there's times I would go to school at 7 in the morning and wouldn't leave to 7 at night. I would stay with the teacher mm -hmm. just to be around the editing machines. Mm -hmm. So as time went on, I perfected my gift, uh, and I just have a belief that if you're passionate about something, you draw people to you. And I was very fortunate to draw the right people to put me in the right direction. And but as, as good as you're and solid as your background was, mm. uh, it's still tough to break Absolutely. in. Absolutely. And you need a little luck. So yes. what, was there a single bit of luck in your experience that broke you loose and brought you to the attention of the right people? Well, I'm a, I'm a man of faith, too. So the luck aspect, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as a, a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. I think everybody, not just me, I think everybody, once you find your gift, and if you're fortunate to find your gift in life, if you're passionate about it, the passion is what draws others to you. Mm -hmm. So investors, people, colleagues, they will, yeah. they will, they will pick up on that passion and say, you know what, <clears throat> I want to be a part of that. Um, to say one instinct, I mean, mm -hmm. I have a very strong, uh, my church was behind me when I was very young to push me in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had some uh, very influential people in my family that connected me to the right people, and I was able to navigate and uh, yeah. eventually wind up to where I am. So you like Hollywood, but you wouldn't want to live there? Um, <laughs> no, probably not to raise kids. <laughs> you, you have to deal with the machine, uh -huh. and that's the yeah. machine, you yeah. know? But I was able to carve out <clears throat> a spot for mm -hmm. me, and it's all about finding where you belong, you know? Yeah. And uh, 
producing uh, low budget independent films is, is where, where I've. That's your niche? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pete, same question. Uh, how did you break into acting? Frankly. And how have you managed to survive in a very competitive field where you can be up one minute and flat out the next and have nothing to do with your talent or circumstances? <laughs> Yes, I, I just all tried? true. My life, <laughs> I don't even life? need to answer this question. Um, I started uh, where most people in the area start, uh, community theater. I was involved in a couple of community theater projects. Uh, in Delaware up, County? Right in Delaware County. Uh, Narberth Community Theater was mm -hmm. my main, um, you know, the main connection for me. Um, I did Jesus Christ Superstar, hmm. where I played Judas. <clears throat> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there I was a guy in the audience. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, guy in the audience came up to me afterwards and said, "You should try this professionally." And uh, so I was did. He, was he sober? I did. <laughs> 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 his, uh, I believe his last name was Friedman. He worked for NBC. I believe really? he passed away, but he basically kind of pushed me. I mean, but like Josh, I had mentors. Um, you know, my father-in-law was the first director that I've ever worked for, mm -hmm. which uh, was interesting enough because I wasn't married. You know, at the time, I got ma I eventually married um, his daughter, uh, my <laughs> beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, but he kind of you know got behind me as well. And then when I decided, you know what, I could really make a go at this. I I can really do this. Mm -hmm. um, I did. I, I pursued it full time, and I was a professional actor for about eight years. And I. I managed to carve out that niche for me, mm -hmm. like Josh carved out his niche, yeah. where I still was able to live here. I tried to go to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I, I came running back home, <laughs> FedExed all of my stuff, came running back home. Um, mm -hmm. But I was able to carve out that niche for me and, and, and survive for many years as a oh, professional you've been very actor. fortunate. And yeah. obviously, you've got the talent. I mean, to, to be able to do that is, yeah. is saying a lot, because in this area, you need multiple jobs. Right. Yes. And the industry shifts constantly, which is kind of where I was in the last yeah. few years. So I, I've taken on a sales job. Um, so I'm in the sales world, you mm -hmm. know, now. Mm -hmm. And a long suffering wife. She, <laughs> she's a saint. Yeah. She is a saint. Oh, uh, to you, Jesus. Yeah. And she. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> now nah, she's been very supportive. So, so what attracted you both to Mitchell's idea, the well, dream? Well, you know, Mitchell has a genius about him, you know, and most geniuses don't fit in with the pack, you know, and he was a person that I've seen in the neighborhood, and we would talk, and I said something very special about him. Some people may say something weird, but something's very special about Mitch, and the more you listen to him, you realize, wow, this guy has death, mm -hmm. you know, and he started telling me, so he found out eventually I was in the entertainment, and then he presented his idea. I told him to go write it. You know, you got to put it on paper. Yes. And uh, he told you the story already. But eventually, I said, wow, this guy is such a genius. I said, you know what? Give me the script. Let me write it. <laughs> <laughs> so we wrote it, and then we took it from there, you know? So it was his genius uh, that attracted me. Yeah. Yeah. And did you do the casting? Yes, we did the casting. So uh, the casting part um, was I started with our anchor actors, Eric Roberts, the Academy Award uh, actor. We're very close. Um, me and Eric was in Jamaica for another movie. We were we were working with the Jamaican government, and at this time, Mitch and I had already greenlit the project. So I said, Eric, hey, you might, you got a couple days. You want to come to uh, Springfield for me? And we talked about it. He eventually said yes. And then Tori Hart, you may know her, her her ex husband Kevin Hart, but she's a reality TV star and she does some acting. She, she's a comedian. We're very close. I said, hey, Tori, you want to be in this movie? She said, sure, anything. So I grabbed those two. Um, and then, then you got yes, and then I was lucky enough, the luck word again, to find Pete, you know? It was, it took some time to get there, but uh, we were very fortunate to find a very talented actor. Because when you're dealing with small budgets. You didn't know him before? I didn't know him you before. Know the <laughs> didn't know him before. It was, it was, it was fate that he had this yeah. role. We had other people that we were considering, but when I met Pete, he stuck out and we wound up making that transition and offering Pete the, mm -hmm. the lead role. Mm -hmm. So we're very fortunate to get a very seasoned, talented actor to carry the anchor of this movie with mm -hmm. Eric. Mm -hmm. And it worked. Eric loves Pete. I mean, he calls me and says, hey, can you write another movie for me and Pete? Mm -hmm. I mean... 
Mitchell and Marsha, his yes. mother, described it as uh, a totally harmonious experience. Yeah. Uh, kumbaya, et yes. Is, is that common or is yes. this an uncommon? That's for me, it's common. <laughs> there are some sets. I just left, I, you know, I'm working on a big movie. Um, I was a part of a big movie. Eddie Murphy, he's filming a movie now. Um, I was a part of it, and uh, it's a lot of moving parts. It could be yeah. very yeah. frustrating, you know, it's a studio movie. Yes. Uh, so my goal is always to create an environment where people feel free, they're mm -hmm. appreciated mm -hmm. from the top to the bottom. You get the best out of people. Let me ask you the yeah. question I asked yeah. uh, Mitchell, and that is, well, did it, your preference is to follow the script verbatim, or do you encourage your actors to improvise? Right? Oh, absolutely. Once they get into the character. Oh, oh, you have to live. Once I cast you, it's your job to make this live. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm the one that kind of tell you if it's too much, too too little. Right. But other than that, once you once in, in my movie, once you get the role, it's it's your world. So, Pete, you you made up some of your own dialogue, I assume. Uh, yes and no. Generally follow the <clears throat> Correct. dream. Part of me, Josh, is, is true to his word. He he made it feel very safe. Yeah. And was welcomed to accepting that collaborative process. And I believe, because I've been part of, of, of a lot of sets where it's like, this is how we're doing it. Right. But Josh kept it open and safe and, and the spirit of collaboration. And I believe mm -hmm. that breeds the best work because yeah. you really are getting the best out of each actor in each situation there. The, the fact that you were able to get a 90 minute film into 12 yeah. days. It was 11. aggressive. 11 days. 11 days. It was yeah. aggressive. <laughs> it's all about planning. I've, I've been a part of projects that are nightmares, and yeah. I've seen the dudes. I'm, I'm, a, I'm always a student. Any, even working on big movies, small movies, mm -hmm. I'm learning my mistakes. I, I want to get better every mm -hmm. movie. So I've seen the pitfalls. <clears throat> so going into this movie, I knew the kind of budget we had. I knew if we can do it this way. Another, another key to the movie was to keep the movie uh, company moves down, which is setups. Yes. You know, we kept we kept uh, location literally within a mm -hmm. walking distance. Mm -hmm. So when our shots were done, walk over, next mm -hmm. shot. Mm -hmm. But things were prearranged where we didn't have the long wait. You know, yeah. what, what Marsha said earlier, you, you're not waiting around an hour, two hours. We're, we're rocking and rolling. Tell me about distribution. Again, yes. Because it is, you know, better yeah, than why that's absolutely. the key. If you can't absolutely. It, Every, well, I have great relationships with uh, Indican Pictures, whose uh, partners is Lionsgate. Uh -huh. um, I have uh, another, I have, a, I have a plethora of, of distributors from okay. tier one to tier four. Right. And I was able to establish that over time. So every project I take on, I always consult with the distributor and say, hey, what movie are you looking for? So where is this likely to be shown? Oh, it's already signed. It's already signed to Indican Pictures. It's being distributed worldwide. So it'll be in local theaters? It's, it starts in Philadelphia. And, at, at, you know, with independent films, you got to be very careful. Yes. you got to just watch the ticket sales. You have to yep. watch the placement. Yep. Yep. But definitely on all digital platforms, both international mm -hmm. and domestic. So I have Indican Pictures, who's going to do domestic, and then I have Urban Home Entertainment, who's doing the international sales. Mm. Yeah, so it's already distributed. That sounds very exciting. Yeah. But the next outing, the yes. next showing is... October uh, 16th. At the... Bryn Mawr Institute, yes. What, and it's what, almost sold out. What time? 7 o'clock. If people are interested, how do they get tickets? Brownpapertickets.com. Search the word Hollywood. H-O-L-L-Y-U-W-O-U. -L -L if people want to see uh, an excerpt from the movie, where do they go? Google. Google. <laughs> Hollywood is all over. Yeah. Yeah, it's H O L L Y W O U L D. Yes. Hollywood. Okay. Yeah. So, my <laughs> guests today in the first segment were uh, Mitchell Bass and his mother, Marsha. Yes. Washa, Wonderful people. Uh, the originator and the financial supporter uh, behind the film. And my guests now are Pete uh, Postiglione. Yes. You're close. You're, you're getting good. Name you remember. He's going to be a Josh, star. And Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. This has been another episode of 30 Minutes, a very special one. Uh, until next time, take very good care of yourselves.